the wedding is at the top. You go over the top, is the wedding, and then you're just screaming. <laughs> <laughs> well, even if you make plans, you never think you're really... Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Heart Harmony. My name is Janoka. And I'm Anthony. And we're The Heart Dogs. And here's where we discuss family, finances, and fitness. Um, we previously posted a video about our debt journey, the one right before this, so check it out if you haven't. And so now we've gotten a few questions over the past month, so we figured we'd answer some of them. So yeah, we had um, a lot of the questions were very similar, so we kind of looped them all together and figured out what would be the best questions to answer that you guys would want to know. Right, so we can get started. The first one is how do we start? Which we kind of mentioned in the other video, but we'll recap quickly. I would say we started with Dave Ramsey. Yep, That's Dave like Ramsey version. is the OG. <laughs> Dave Ramsey's the big unk. Dave Ramsey's the homie. Um, if you don't know Dave Ramsey, he's just a debt-free guy, um, old white guy. He just tells you to get out of debt as fast as you can. So her father gave me a book. I read the book years he ago. He gave me a book. He gave you a book. <laughs> I borrowed the book. Uh, well, yeah, I borrowed the book, read the book, sat the book down, picked the book back up. <laughs> Uh, right after we got 2017. married. 2017. Not right after. You picked it up 2017. We got married in May 2016. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, we paid. We were able to pay off our wedding with cash and the help of family. So we realized we were able to save up a lot of money and, and pay for the wedding. So at that point, I kind of realized we kind of realized that we could put our efforts towards something greater um, following the wedding. So that's kind of where we picked up Dave Ramsey and started focusing on our debt. Valentine's Day gift. I gave you. Um... It's pro is nine week program financial like, peace university, which yeah. is a nine week course that we yeah. attended. Um, he teaches the same methods that he teaches in the book, but you really go through the class and sit down. Mm -hmm. You learn about his methods and just getting out of debt. And from there, it was that's where we started. Um, let me see. The question was, did we stop our four hundred one k? No, we didn't stop our four hundred one k with our companies. It maintained that whatever we had it at, we didn't bring it down or anything like that. Whatever we had it, we, we didn't raise it. At. Um, we were just then, getting the basic match and we didn't raise it. And then our Roth IRA, we stopped towards the end. We didn't stop it the whole entire time. As we got closer, I guess we were like, all right, let's 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 get this debt out of the way. Um, so our Roth IRA, which is separate from our um, company's 401k, that was at the end. Yeah, we stopped that and we just put that money that we were putting towards the, the retirement accounts over to the debt. Right. Um, something else. Did we start by pulling our credit report? No, I did, I barely looked at my credit report ever, actually. Um, I'm a bit more <laughs> better at it now, but I didn't look at my credit report. But that is, it. we didn't do that, but that is something that we, I definitely recommend people to do. Pulling your credit report, especially early on when you aren't sure what debts you have outstanding. Mm -hmm. You could have something that your mother opened up in your name years ago. And you might that might just be with debt collectors somewhere. So you definitely want to pull that yeah. if you're, yeah, <laughs> you definitely want to pull that if you're unsure of where your debts are. Right. Okay. So that's credit report. Let's see. Two questions that were kind of similar. What is one thing that was hardest to sacrifice, and what are some sacrifices we both had to make on the journey? So I'll start first. with um, my sneaker fetish. I had a big sneaker addiction. Uh, I was buying two, three pairs a month. Four or five. It was it was a couple of pairs of sneakers, <laughs> a lot of pairs of sneakers, and uh, once we got on that once we got on our debt journey, I, I cut it out. But once I was off, I haven't bought a pair of sneakers in two years, and I don't miss it. A single Saturday morning, waking up, logging on to Nike.com, hitting submit, submit, submit. A lot of time wasted, a lot of money. Mm. Um, what other sacrifices you had? <laughs> uh, I think that's it. That was the biggest. That was the biggest one, anyway. Okay, for me, I I wouldn't say I had much sacrifices. I think because we increased our income a lot. Like we added on about four or five things. Um, so we didn't necessarily have to cut down on things. Like okay, we contacted the cable company to see where we could cut. But like my car, I didn't have any car payments on it. Um, so I didn't sacrifice much. The biggest sacrifice I say for the family was that. Like I said, we added on four or five things. So I was out of the home a lot. Um, so a lot of the home fell on Tony. Um, so cooking, laundry, things like that. He had to pick up because if he didn't. And when I got done. Yes. Time was time was probably the <laughs> biggest sacrifice that we both had to make. We sacrificed a lot of time to, yeah. to get out of debt. Um, late nights, early mornings, Saturdays, Sundays, before church. Working seven days a week. Seven days a week. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. a lot of yeah. time. So so that, that was a big sacrifice. Um, 
I think like last year, 2018, we didn't go back to New York as much as we did, I think between 2016 and 17. Um, so that, that was another sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, you know, in regards to like traveling and stuff like that, I increase with us increasing all the side hustles that we did that allowed us to travel or me, Tony didn't go many places, nope. me to travel some places I did say no to, but I was able to go to most things that I wanted to, um, other sacrifices. No, we were blessed to not have to sacrifice too much. I yeah, we say. didn't cut. We didn't cut our cable. Well, we did. We cut. We cut corners in those areas, but we didn't cut our cable. We didn't have to sell our car. We raised our income. Essentially, yeah. we raised our income to a point where we were able to keep our lifestyle without right. cutting too much while focusing on debt. So right. that was a huge blessing. Yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it. And so if you're not able to raise your income, then you should be cutting in some ways so that you can put more. And so. if you could raise your income and cut, then you are on it, buddy. Yeah. Excuse our dog trying to get his ball under the couch. Um, let's see. Somebody said, do you have any tips for single parents or is it the same? It is not the same. I'm not a single parent. But I can tell you it's not the same. <laughs> I'm not a single parent either, but I grew up in a single parent household. Um, and I guess it depends if you have one kid versus three kids. My mom, especially. Had, my mom had three kids. Yeah, so I would say it's not the same. You Like, you probably aren't able to just go do all these other side jobs and increase your income because you have other responsibilities. You got to be home, take care of your kid homework, all these other things. So that's a big thing. Cutting corners probably is even tighter depending on where you live. I will refer back to New York because where we're from. Um, it's, you know, taxes and all that. It's hard to, to cut down. It's like, you probably do have to cut the cable or would, decide like I won't have a car and just use public transportation. I probably would start internally and figure out what expenses do you have to cut? Is there anything that you're spending money on that you don't have to? Uh, one thing people don't realize is that their car is a lot more than what they can afford. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case, but I would <laughs> recommend you starting internally and figuring out, all right, well, I don't need the latest iPhone or you know what? I don't need premium cable. Mm -hmm. Start with little things. It starts to add up. It starts to change your mindset. Um, and that's where you got to begin to change your mindset, changing your family's mindset. Right. So it may be similar in that budgeting and budgeting. figuring out. Once you do your budget, you see like if you have any extra money, fifty dollars, twenty five dollars, whatever it may be, that may that would I would say is the same. Um, how you go about it may be a bit different though. And I would probably say try to get your kids on board or a child on board, depending on how old they are. If they're old enough to understand this journey for you, they should be try to get them to help you on help them understand what it means for their future, not just your future, their future and your family's future. Mm -hmm. Try to get them on board with that. That may be a huge help. Right. I agree. That's as much as I can say because we're not single parents. Another thing was like even with like our emergency fund, our emergency fund um, would be different from what your emergency fund would be because mm -hmm. you have other responsibilities. We had our car and our dog and things yeah, like that. Will. So that's about it. <laughs> Let me see. What else do we have? Do we stop? <laughs> and then last one that we had was I think last conversation we spoke. Um, the last video, I'm sorry, we spoke about, we had mentioned about dual income and Tony said that he doesn't want to talk about that. So somebody asked like, what do you mean? Because they were saying like dual income does make a difference. So do you remember what you meant when you said you didn't want to speak about that? Oh, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to talk about it. No. Um, yeah. So they're asking you to, to explain now what you mean by that. Oh, what you meant. Um, I'm sorry. We now now that we're starting to express this this debt free journey, we're getting a lot more questions. I guess a lot more. You guys have dual income, um, and I and I yes, I recognize that we do have dual incomes. We both have jobs, which is which is great. Um, but there are people doing this without dual income. Um, there are people doing it with um, single families and dual income. Yes, it does make a difference, but your mindset has to be there. We can make all the money in the world, but if our mindset hasn't changed which it didn't change when we first started this journey, we were still spending. Um, we would have been in the same place where we were. Blue, get out of here. Pay attention. <laughs> we would have been in the same place where we were no matter what income um, bracket we're in. Yeah, so you just mean, um, you understand a dual income makes a difference, but just mindset is bigger than income. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. 
income does play a huge factor, but I think right. mindset. I think, yeah, obviously the amount you make and the fact that it's two of us allows us to pay it much faster. I feel of the amount we're able to put down and able to put it and it's like compared to a single parent, of course, it's just not the same depending on your situation. But I do feel like you said, um, once you change your mindset, then you definitely, because there's lawyers and doctors that have more debt than us, but also makes more than us that I'm sure could pay it also if they wanted to, um, based on their income. But I was listening to one just... of my favorite podcasts and this lady, this lady called in and she got out of debt. I don't know, remember how much it was. And they found that her husband was a doctor. So they trying to change her whole story of like, oh, you had a husband that's a doctor. And she kind of posted her husband's spending habits and it was through the roof. So his mindset never changed. So she was like, well, we got out of debt eventually, but his mindset never changed. It took us longer to get there. Um, so mindset is huge. Yeah. So it can be done, obviously, for a single person, just at a slower pace, which I think is fine as long as you're working towards it. There's, unless you have an end date, like you have a rush. But other than that. It's not a race. Right. It's a marathon. Uh, let's see. That is it. I don't think we had any, any other questions. That most if you guys have any it. questions that you want to know about our journey or just... Um, our fitness routine or anything ready to find family finances, let us know. Okay. Thank you for joining and leave a comment below if you have any other questions. Thank you. Happy New Year. Oh, yeah. You got to say that still. <laughs>